For part C now, we're asked to use our answers to solve this equation by variation of parameters. Okay, so to do that, the first thing we do with variation of parameters is we look at the associated homogeneous diffy Q. We solve that, but that's the diffy Q we solved in parts A and part B. So we're going to let y1 be uh, x to the minus third and y2 x to the minus third natural log x. The next thing we need to do, and I'm going to write this in red because a lot of people forgot to do it, is we need to divide through by the leading coefficient x squared to put this into this normal form y double prime plus 7 over x y prime plus 9 over x squared y equals 2. We take that and divide by x squared. All right. This is what we identify now as our function f of x that we're going to use in the variation of parameters. So we have the y1, the y2, and remember, to get the f of x, we need to divide through by the leading function there, the leading coefficient. All right, now we just have a bunch of algebra and calculus to grind through. We take the Ronskin. So once again, we take y1 and its derivative, y2 and its derivative. So the x to the minus third negative 3x to the minus 4th, and then the x to the minus 3rd natural log x, and then we have its derivative, which once again we use product rule, negative 3x to the minus 4th natural log x plus x to the minus 4th, and you go through that determinant, this times this minus this times this, you get x to the minus 7th for w. For W1 now, we replace the column with Y1 and Y1 prime with 0 in that special function F of X we have. And so we have 0, and we have the 9 natural log X minus 3 over X squared. And then we have the same column we had here before. And we get the ever delightful minus 9x to the minus fifth natural log of x squared minus, or excuse me, plus 3x to the minus fifth. natural log of x. Then we get the determinant w2 where we have y1, the, the first column of the Ronskin is the same, the second column is the 0 f of x now. So we have x to the minus third, negative 3x to the minus fourth, and then 0, and then this guy, We go through the determinant, and we get something a little less nasty. 9x to the minus fifth natural log x minus 3x to the minus fifth. All right. So why are we doing all of this? Well, we're going to let u1 prime be w1 over w. And when you do that, you get u1 prime equals negative 9x squared natural log of x squared plus 3x squared natural log of x. And then you integrate that and you're going to have to use integration by parts a couple of times to get this to all work out. You get negative 3x cubed 
natural log of x squared plus 3x cubed natural log of x minus x cubed. We have a function u2 prime, which is w2 over w. You work that out, and you get 9x squared natural log x minus 3x squared. Integrate that. Once again, use parts. You can actually uh, use what you've learned from this integral. U2 gives you 3x cubed natural log x minus 2x cubed. So what are the U1 and U2? Well, remember, with variation of parameters, we're making the assumption that the particular solution is some function of x times y1 plus some function of x times y2. So really, it is a, uh, it's really just a reduction of order kind of problem. So what I need to do is remember what the y1 was and the y2 was. If I take u1, y1, you end up getting negative 3 natural log of x squared plus 3 natural log of x minus 1. If you take u2, y2, you end up getting 3 natural log of x squared minus 2 natural log of x. And so you add these up for the yp, these guys cancel out, you're just left with natural log of x minus 1. And you can check this. Remember what the particular solution is supposed to do. It's supposed to handle the non, excuse me, the non-homogeneous part of the Diffie Q. So you can check this out. It's not too bad. Yp prime is 1 over x. Yp double prime is minus uh, 1 over x squared. You end up getting negative 1 plus 7 plus 9 natural log x minus 9. And sure enough, that'll check out to be 9 natural log of x minus 3. So that Yp does the job. So what's our final answer then? y equals yc plus yp. yc is the complementary solution. That's the solution to the homogeneous Diffie Q, which we found to be this. Plus the yp, which we found natural log x minus 1. So that's the general solution to this non-homogeneous Diffie Q. And our interval of validity here x is greater than 0. Now what's interesting to do, uh, certainly there's the bonus there, which I'm not going to get into. I've, we've talked about this a little bit in class. Uh, another thing that's interesting to do is to start off, you get your y equal x to the minus third, and then do reduction of order on this equation with the non-homogeneity and see what happens. In other words, don't go through and solve the homogeneous and get the other one using reduction of order there. Try reduction of order. In other words, try y equals uh, ux to the minus third. And take that and plug it into the non-homogeneous piece and see what happens. Okay, that'll do it for take home three.